Hey, it's your man, Russ Mitchell, Homesick Buckeye. We're back at it, doing our thing, making it do what it do. Welcome to the channel. We're here to motivate, educate, inspire, hopefully entertain you a little bit. We're here to, to, uh, to live, to learn, to laugh. That's what we do here, man. We try to give you a word of encouragement to help you with your, your struggles in life. We all have them. And um, I, I want you to hit that like button. I want you to subscribe to the channel. And if you find anything of value here, anything you think someone can benefit from, man, I want you to share this video with them. And and um, and hopefully we can give them that word of encouragement. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the series. This is chapter three of my overweight life where I, I'm talking about the things I've learned as I've made breakthroughs and changes in my life. And um, I want to encourage you. If you got breath, you got life, you got a chance to turn that thing around, man. Whatever you're going through, you got a chance to turn it around, man. Keep looking for a breakthrough. Keep looking for a way out. Uh, so with that, we're going to jump right into chapter three. If you remember, we uh, left off at the year 2000. And I was living my best life, man. I'm making some money. And and um, during these years, I, I, uh, I bought a house. And, you know, I've got... Uh, uh, a boat and it's a couple of cars and I'm racing my horses still and I'm actually racing in in Canada now man I'm Mr. International playing with a passport and I'm just like a Latin chick get you anything you ask for it's either him or me champagne and itself who who I lost myself who I lost myself for me I had a little flashback there hold on let me who let me get it together let me come on Russ come on Russ I was doing well. Life was going great. I'm in my 30s and, and I'm making that money, doing what I want to do in my life. And I was at home one day and I got up and got out and got a shirt out of the closet and put it on and it was a little tight. And I, I'm like, what? I can't, this thing's kind of tight, man. And I reached into the closet, got another one, I put it on and I was like, this thing's kind of tight, too. I, what's going on here? And I, it hit me, man. I'm putting on more weight. And I don't know how much I weigh at this time, family. You remember from the last chapter, I hadn't weighed myself since 1993. So I don't know how much I weigh, but I know I'm heavy. I know it's more than 319 pounds because that's what I weighed seven, eight years ago. But you know me. I got the depression-resistant mind. Don't let it. Don't let it get me down. I'm, you know. And I remember uh, my dad at this time, you know, saying something to me, man. I uh, was with them, and he, you know, he said, "Hey, man, you, how you, you doing, good son? And that's all great. And how's your health?" And you know, I'm like, "I'm, I'm, I'm good, Dad. I, I'm all right." And you know, I'm in my thirties. Now, keep in mind, even to this day, even to this day, I've never been on any medications. Never had any health problems. I've taken uh, uh, nothing more than penicillin in my entire life for, for strep throat and for, for, and for gonorrhea. But, that, but we're not talking about that. That was, that was a bad time, rough time. It's not important here. Not, not what we're talking about today. Folks, I did not have any medical problems. No aches, no pains, no nothing. I'm doing my thing. I'm telling you, life was good. But he says to me, he says, you know, son, you, you got youth on your side right now, but youth doesn't last forever. Uh, you know, Father Tom is undefeated, man, and uh, you, you just might want to think about trying to fix that thing before you get too far down the, uh, the, the, the road. And I'm like, okay, okay. And my dad knows me. He knows, you know, not to, not to push too hard, man. You, you, you don't push me because I'm close to the... Edge. I'm trying. Here I go again, boy. Come on, Russ. Get this. This is important now. This is a big serious, okay? <clears throat> my dad knows my personality. He knows you can't really push me too hard because I, I'm a knucklehead, man. I don't listen. But he says this to me, and I, it's the first time I can remember him ever, ever saying something like that to me. And it was also at this time that I first heard about the low-carb diet and the low-carb, uh, the Atkins it was at the time. And, buddy, let me tell you what, you think the medical establishment's against us now. 
it was way different 20 years ago, man. I mean, they were, it, this thing's going to kill you, and you can't do this, and heart attack, and stroke, and cholesterol, and the whole nine. And, you know, I, I, it, it flew in the face of everything that I knew about nutrition and diet and everything you'd ever been taught. And I'm watching these guys eat this grease and this bacon and this stuff, man. And I'm already a, a, a very overweight, and I'm already a candidate for heart attack and stroke. And I'm looking at this thing like, you know, am I, am I signing my death certificate if I do this? I mean, I don't want to jump out of the frying pan into the fire. But I tried it. And ironically, as I look back, I did feel a little better. And I did lose little bits of weight, you know. Maybe five pounds or something like that. But again, I didn't take it seriously. I, I didn't. I thought it was just a fad, just a way to lose some weight quick, and and it was bad for your health. And I didn't want that, man. I didn't want that. So I just kind of poo pooed it. So I, I'm going through life, and we get to 2002, three, four. I'm gaining weight. I, I just buy new clothes. I'm doing well financially. It's no big deal. And again, I I don't let Things keep me down and that. I just keep keep moving. Don't complain. So then I hit 2004, 2005, and I have some financial hardships. I lost everything. Lost my house and cars and the horses. And it was a really low time, and, and I was eating my way through it. Uh, I relocate to Florida to, to try to build my life again from rock, rock bottom, eating my way through it, just... You know, we talked about that in chapter one, my unhealthy relationship with food. It was still there, and, and I was happy I was eating. When I was sad, I was eating. When I was you know, when I, I was going through stuff, man, I was comfort foods. They call it comfort food for a reason. And But I start to turn it around a little bit in 2007, 2008. By now, I'm in Florida, and I'm, I'm wearing a 6X now, and I'm starting to turn the thing around, and and my business starts to pick up a little bit, and, and things start to 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 look good for me, and I and the future's looking bright, and I got some some things that are working and things that are building, but I'm still eating uh, too much, and I'm and the wrong things, and I'm 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 putting on weight. It's 2012 now. I buy a house, and things are rolling, and my business is picking up, and um, I buy a two-story. A townhouse got upstairs and downstairs and and I got a girlfriend now and she's she's living with me and and uh, I, I'm doing better and fast forward 2013 14 uh, now I'm, I'm a little north of 6x and I start to to feel a little heavier and so I talked to my girlfriend about it. I'm like hey you know, I'm, I'm getting a little bigger and a little heavier and not that comfortable with it. And uh, maybe we should start eating a little better. You know, not eat out so much. Let's try to cook at home. And so I do what uh, I was always taught to do and do what everybody's taught to do. I start eating fruit and vegetables and, and grains. And I'm eating oatmeal and granola and, and lean meats and, and all this stuff. And it's not working. And uh, we get into 2016 and not losing any weight. I'm exercising a little bit and I'm, I'm trying, but it not, it's just not working. I didn't know then what I know now that my body was fighting me, working against me. So we're into 2016 and I'm in my house and the walls are closing in on me. Um, I'm not comfortable. The bathrooms, the showers uh, are smaller than it seemed. And the toilets and the, the bathrooms are they're kind of tighter. And I'm not comfortable in my own home. I mean, this is my mind. This is how I'm coping with this thing. I, I buy a piece of land and I design a house. And I build a house with more room, bigger bathrooms, bigger showers, bigger everything to accommodate my my. My weight gain. And again, you know, these are voices in my head. It's the depression-resistant mind, as I call it. You, know, I, you don't complain. You don't whine. You, fig you just figure out something. You, you muddle through. You look at all your blessings. I can hear my Aunt Wanda's voice. 
listen, look at all your blessings, and you're going to have a big, beautiful house, and there's nothing to complain about. So we start the, the groundbreaking of a house, and I want to, I'm going to end the video there. Uh, we'll pick it up at, in 2016, and uh, the next few years, which would start a downward spiral. Uh, but I want to, want to encourage you, before I let you go, hang in there. If you're fighting something, struggling with something, trying to change your life, you'll find a breakthrough. Don't give up. Keep searching for the answers. You know, I tell you all the time, be thankful and grateful, never bitter or hateful. And as always, I wish you all the best, and I'll see you on the next one.